Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Harsham Ali Khan. This is the fourth video on production analysis. The first video I have explained you about what is production, what are the factors of production, what is production function. Second video I have explained you about law of variable proportions. Third video I have explained the reason for the different stages in the law of variable proportions and in this fourth video I am going to explain you about the law of returns to scale so very important most of the examination they have asked this question explain the law of returns to scale and this law explain the relationship between input and output in the long run when we increase the input, output will also increase. But what is the behavior of increase? Will the increase be same or not? That's what I'm going to explain you. So watch the video till the end. Don't skip in between. If you have not watched earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject business economics. Select the videos of production analysis. Watch the first three videos. Be perfect on the concept of production. Before explaining this uh, video on law of returns to scale, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. So first of all, the law of returns to scale. The law of returns to scale refers to the relationship between inputs and outputs in the long run. When all the inputs, whether variable factors or fixed factors can be changed. Remember in the last video, I have explained you that in the short run, we cannot change the fixed factors of production. Whereas the variable factors can be changed in the short run. But in the long run, all the factors can be changed whether it is variable factors or fixed factors now returns law of returns to scale is applicable when a business can be able to change all factors whether fixed or variable in the long run then what is the effect on the output so it express the relationship between input and output in the long run when all the factors whether it is fixed or variable are varied in the same proportion now economists use the phrase return to scale to describe the behavior in the long run in relation to variation in input so in the long run when the producer changes the input what is the effect on the output that is explained by this law of returns to scale the law returns to scale can be defined as the percentage increase in output where all the inputs vary in the same proportion. What is the percentage change in the output in the long run when all the inputs are changed? That is the main theme of this law of returns to scale. What is the percentage change in output for a given percentage change in the inputs? All the inputs, variable as well as fixed. This is the meaning of the term law of returns to scale. Now types of returns to scale. The returns to scale are of three types. They are first one, increasing returns to scale. In the first stage, we will get increasing returns to scale. That means if 10% is the increase in input leading to 15% increase in the output. So during the first stage, the percentage increase in output is more than the percentage increase in the input. If a proportionate increase in output is larger than the proportionate increase in input, the situation occurring is known as increasing returns of scale the first stage in this law of returns to scale is this stage the stage is increasing returns the increasing returns will occur when the percentage increase in output is more than the percentage increase in the inputs in other words increasing returns to scale occurs when a percentage increase in input leads to a greater percentage increase in output this can be explained by taking an example 
The example is if a 5% increase in inputs. If the producer has increased all inputs by 5%, then what will be the increase in output? The output increase by 10%. Result in 10% increase in output. An organization is set to attain increased returns. See here, example I have given. If the producer increased all inputs by 5%, it will result in 10% increase in output. So in this case, the organization is set to be in increasing returns to scale. Right? The below graph depicts the clear understanding about the behavior of increasing returns to scale. On this graph, on x-axis we have taken input, on y-axis I have taken output. If you draw the curve, the curve will be sloping upward, going upward from left to right, indicating as we increase the input, the output is also increasing. Higher the input, higher the output. That means the output is increasing at a very high rate. Then generally increasing returns to sale occur due to the following reasons. Why? Why there is disproportionate change in the output and input? Output higher rate, input lower rate. Why? The reason may be in industries where there is a possibility to undertake production on a small scale, the situation of increasing returns occur. For example, if a business is producing the goods on a small scale, little goods the business is producing now there is a scope of increasing the scale when the scale is increased definitely the output will increase at a higher rate than the input it is in the increasing return scale because presently the business is dealing in small quantity small scale so when a business is dealing in small scale and converting it into large scale definitely increasing returns to scale will occur. Secondly, in case of where the incre increased size of operation gives a chance of size of dimensional advantage. Dimensional advantage, for example, in this case, in case of chemical industries and dairies, where stage is an important activity, storage is an important activity. So wherever the storage is important activity, their dimensional advantage the business will get. So it will, the percentage increase in output will be more than the percentage increase in input. Thirdly, in case of large scale industries where work is divided into fragments and as a result, each individual attains specialization. <coughs> if the business is dealing in large scale, the business will divide the labor into different sections different departments this leads to specialization of the workers when specialization occurs then definitely the output the productivity of labor will increase the output will increase at a higher rate than the increase in input so these three may be the reasons why there is an increasing returns to scale then second constant returns to scale that means the percentage change in input and the percentage change in output will be equal. If there is 10% increase in inputs leading to 10% increase in output, it is called constant returns to scale. If the proportionate increase in all inputs is equal to proportionate increase in output, both the percentages are same. Input increased by 10%, output increased by 10%. Then situation of constant returns to scale occurs. In other words, constant returns to scale occurs when percentage increase in output is equal to percentage increase in output. Very simple. If both percentages are same, then we call it as constant returns to scale. According to Marshall, the law of constant returns to scale operate when the advantage and disadvantage of large scale production are exactly balanced over a range of output. So according to one of the economists, Marshall, he said the constant returns to scale will occur in a large scale operation where the advantage and disadvantage of large scale operations will be balanced. Will be balanced. That means advantage and disadvantage both are equal. And in that circumstance, there is a constant returns to scale. 
For example, if the input increased by 10% and the resultant output also increased by 10%, then the organization is set to achieve constant returns to scale. If both are equal, 10% increase in input, 10% increase in output. So the graph of constant returns to scale can be depicted as on y-axis output or x-axis input. From origin, a strain upward going line will appear. This is called constant returns to scale. Now, if 10% increase in input, 10% will, will be increase in output. If 20% increase in input, 20% increase in output. That is constant returns to scale. Now, last is decreasing returns to scale. This is the third type of returns to scale. If the proportionate increase in output is less than the proportionate increase in input, then the situation of decreasing returns to scale will occur. If the input is increased by 20%, whereas output has increased only by 10%, it is called decreasing returns to scale because output is growing at a lower rate than the increase in input. So, for example, if the input increase by 10% and the resultant output increase only by 5%, then the organization is set to achieve decreasing returns to scale. The formula, the graph, the presentation of this decreasing returns to scale on the graph is output input. This is the curve which shows decreasing returns to scale. The returns to scale will be lower. Then decreasing returns to scale occurs due to the following reasons. What may be the reason why there is decreasing returns to scale? When a firm continues to expand its business beyond a particular point, always. For every business, there is a saturation point. Beyond that, the business should not grow. If the business grows beyond that saturation point, then definitely de decreasing returns to scale will arise. The returns to scale will decrease if the business goes beyond the saturation point. Secondly, increasing inefficiency in production. When we increase the production on large scale, there is a possibility of mismanagement. The efficiency, the productivity may come down on account of which there is decreasing returns to scale. Now, after the maximum capacity of the individual, individual indivisible input has reached the limit of specialization. When over specialization takes place, when we have divided all the activities into a number of groups, then what will happen? Instead of getting advantage of specialization, we may get disadvantages over specialization due to which decreasing returns to scale may arise. So in this video, I have explained you about the law of returns to scale. This law explains the relationship between the input and output in the long run, where all the input factors can be changed, whether fixed factors or variable factors. So what is the relationship between input and output is explained by uh, law of returns to scale. Secondly, three, I mean, types of returns to scale are there increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale and decreasing returns to scale. So watch the video twice, thrice, definitely you can be able to get a good command on this topic of returns to scale. Inshallah, we will continue the next topic in this production analysis in the next video.